Hi Sven, question. Uh, this is a huge vacuum system, right? So, uh, why does it need to be temperature stable? Thanks for the question. So, basically, in the design, we identified that we have to have this seven and a half meter long, very precise guide systems in order to project this highly focused beam uh, on another focus point 12 meters away. So we end up in the single micron precision requirements of some mirrors that, are, that may be seven meters apart from each other. Now when we, st when we start thinking in what temperature deviations due to materials, then we realize that, for example, for uh, aluminium, we are somewhere in the 24 microns per meter and Kelvin. Steel, I think it's somewhere in the 8 to 12 um, microns per meter Kelvin. Now, over a s with a system that is 7.5 meter long, with a single degree, uh, you can think, uh, or with a single Kelvin temperature difference, we would already be far out of specs. Now, to make the system robust against those temperature differences, which might come from daily temperature cycles within this facility, but might also come from um, uh, yearly cycles like summer and winter, uh, we identified that we have to put the entire carrier system inside a vacuum chamber and that we also have to put some um, infrared uh, shield on the inside of the vacuum chamber. This is also a system that we will talk in, uh, about in another video. So with that we try to isolate this entire carrier, this entire guide system as well as possible from its environment. On top of that, uh, we identified that we somehow have to influence the temperature uh, to, to especially to compensate for uh, long uh, cycles like yearly cycles. Therefore, on the bottom of this guide system, when you look towards the mover system, this, this, those golden, golden plates, um, they are essentially the feet on which the carrier stands on and they are isolated from the vacuum chamber. And in those feet we have, uh, uh, we let water flow uh, through um, and we control the temperature of this water very well. So that at the end means we can actively control the temperature of this carrier. And now as we can do that, we of course also need temperature, we, we need a way to control the temperature that we apply here in order to have an as homogeneous temperature over the year. Mm -hmm. To do that we have uh, external, PT external, external temperature sensors, PT-hundreds, with which we measure the temperature in the hole. Then we have temperature sensors in the feet, in those, um, in those uh, basically feet that connect those movers with the carrier and we also have PT hundreds on the carrier itself. There we have some PT hundreds below uh, the carrier, we have PT hundreds on the connection points from the carrier to, its, um, to the feet and we also have um, temperature control on top of the carrier. Here so with these PT hundreds, um, you basically monitor the temperature, yes. right? And when you monitor it, uh, you must have other means to control it, correct? And uh, what do you use for controlling the temperature? Uh, well, you're, you're right with the temperature controllers, with those PT hundreds, we control it. We influence the temperature with this um, water uh, pipes that go through the feet and that are connected 
to a um, uh, it, it's basically an, uh, a heating uh, or a temperature uh, controller uh, for water. So it, it's ULAP or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And with that, we can actually heat a bath of water to a temperature uh, accuracy within uh, the tenth of, uh, with it within roughly tenth Kelvin. And we can then pump this very well temperature controlled water through these pipes. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Thanks a lot, Sven. Welcome.